So the guys who started Eleven, um, when they they started as students, and when they graduated, they wanted to make it a citywide business, mm-hmm. and so it started as an intercollegiate music magazine. So they were mostly marketing to students and distributing on campuses, and that's where they found a lot of their writers, stuff like that. Um, and then after about a year of that being really successful, they just made it a general citywide magazine. So their tagline went from being St. Louis's intercollegiate music magazine to just music, community, and culture. And it was a really easy transition for them because for the most part, you know, similar content, similar demographics of just young, active, urban livers. But um, I knew I wanted to live in St. Louis just because I think it's really easy to get involved here. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot going on here. And to me, it was a new place and still kind of is and um, honestly like it's so cheap to live here that it's a lot more conducive to try to do things that maybe are a little bit riskier here like I knew I was interested in entrepreneurship but to go to San Francisco and be an entrepreneur it's a dime a dozen and Mm -hmm. you have to work your butt off um, just to like barely make a living and scrape by whereas here in St. Louis like I work for a small music magazine and I live very comfortably and um, there's a lot going on here. I think, you know, some other big cities that people think of moving to like Chicago or New York or LA or San Francisco, there's a lot of stuff going on there, of course, but it's more, I think, that it's handed to you on a silver platter. Like, here's what to do. Here's what's cool. And I think in St. Louis, there's as much going on and there are as many creative people and as much talent. It's just a little bit more under the radar. Like Mm -hmm. you kind of have to dig for it, but when you find it, it's even more rewarding. (laughs) And like Mm -hmm. I'm being from San Francisco, it's like honestly most young people there do work in startup technology. And that can mean a lot of different things, but it's still not as diverse as here where it's like, I have friends who are carpenters and architects and and salespeople and you know but like working in all different kinds of fields and um so I don't know I knew I knew I wanted to stay in St. Louis I just wasn't sure exactly what I'd be doing I went to a um, meeting for St. Louis Musicians Unite which is essentially I think a Facebook group but um it was a group that I guess a few years ago was interested in meeting and being kind of like a shared resource group for local musicians. Well, they sort of kind of fell off the map for a while and they just had their first meeting in a few years last week. And I went and didn't really know what to expect and it was weird. It was like a totally different group of people than I'm familiar with in terms of like the music scene, the productive music scene. It was a lot of kind of like old guard St. Louis rockers who all live out in the like the county like far away some of them I mean Baldwin and cities on the east side I'd never even heard of and they're all playing clubs like in downtown St. Charles or or in Edwardsville and things that just in the short time I've had to get to know the music scene here so far haven't really encountered before right exactly So that was interesting and even that you know is still so removed from a lot of other groups like um, even among sort of like young active musicians in the city for example I've spoken with quite a bit um, a multimedia online kind of promoter group called Made Monarchs Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them but they they have a lot more of a focus on like hip-hop and so we've tried to collaborate on some things to just kind of like share contacts and like get new groups. But it's funny, like really there's such insular pockets all over that unless we were going out of our way to interact in this way, we could just go on, go on with our lives, never knowing of each other sometimes it mm-hmm. seems like. Because I think when, when the groups do overlap and when the sounds do clash, in general, I always hear the response is good, which is good for St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And I think more of that's happening. So hopefully, you know, it'll have a snowball effect.
um, last month we went to South by Southwest. And the reason Austin is music mecca is because bands like of all different genres, ages, uh, locations, everything, all support each other. It's this pretty massive scene, and there's something to appreciate whatever type of music for the type of music that it is. Um, and that's like a regional thing that they have, and I think St. Louis doesn't quite have that yet, but it would be a really big thing for here to have that kind of regional supported scene as opposed to like, you know, my band in Dogtown never plays with this band who's always playing in Midtown kind of thing, you know. I do think media is a really big part of that um, because I know with Eleven, we've published stories that will get people who like emails kind of like fan mail or letters to the editor kind of thing um, saying like, I'm so glad I read about this in your magazine because I would have never known or or even we'll promote a show and a bunch of people that wouldn't have, have gone or known about it will show up and I think that helps a lot. Mm. And I don't think that bands in St. Louis, I don't, well, I don't think there's enough music industry to inform bands how to kind of do the PR thing and, and um, I don't know, there's a certain level of professionalism that I think a lot of St. Louis bands lack, unfortunately. Like, they'll come up with a, out with an album and not send it to a single blog or a single paper or a single label, and so it never gets heard. And I think in other cities where there's more music industry or more of a regional scene that's supported, bands know to do that better. Mm. Well, when, one way that we do it, for example, is like we'll have showcases or we'll have big events where we invite bands that we know to play, mm -hmm. and that gives them pretty big exposure in some cases. So, for example, we had a big party in December here called Hallelujah, and it was in the whole co-working space. So we had two stages, and we had, at the time, the other side of our office had just opened, so all the rooms there weren't leased yet. They were empty, and we had like live art and kind of like gallery show kind of things in all those rooms. And I think in total we had 17 or 18 bands play in one night, and it was all free, and it was like this big publicized thing. And so for those bands, like they did us a huge favor in playing for free, but at the same time, like I know a lot of people who came to that party about 950 people came to a holiday party, which is sort of silly. Mm -hmm. um, and it was huge. And I know a lot of people I still hear say, like, that's the best party we've ever been to. And, like, XYZ band was so good. Like, I would have never known about them. And even, like, bands knowing each other through that experience. Like, I know um, a couple of bands, It and Bear Hive, have, like, played together, I think, a couple of times since then because they met there. Um, and... That's also the case with a few other bands that I like to think we had a hand in connecting a little sure. bit. Um, so, uh, you know, that isn't quite so much the top down me saying, you should do this and like meet this person and go here and then them do it and pay off. It's more the organic of like, let's just get a bunch of people together that we think can really create good energy mm -hmm. and see what happens. I like to think that our real kind of mission statement is more about engaging people and letting them know what's going on so that they actually want to go out and see live shows or want to go out and explore new neighborhoods and and in that process, you know, lose the kind of regional fragmentation um, and just open their minds to things that are going on here, which is a lot of music. Like, we are a music city, and I think sometimes people forget that. So mm -hmm. just by promoting, sometimes just by promoting the city, I think Eleven is also promoting the music scene with it. But also the music scene and then the city, so it's both. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I try not to publish articles that are really harsh and, like, hating on any bands or having a really negative criticism. Not because we couldn't, we could, but we don't have to because there's enough positive things to say here and I don't think that the music scene here is at that point where it could really handle that. Like naysaying just isn't really doing anything for anyone right now. Hmm. Um, and there's enough positive stuff that we can say that we don't have to go the negative route. Um, that said, 
with things like in particular album reviews I'm very adamant with the staff to be honest about it um, sort of as like a constructive criticism to those sure. bands um, because saying a good a bad album is good when it's not is just reinforcing bad music being mm -hmm. made <laughs> mm -hmm. so on the similar topic with Eleven, we're a mix of local and national, and I I would love to do, you know, a lot more local stuff, and we have since I've been a part of Eleven. It's mm -hmm. been a lot more local stuff, but the reality is for a lot of St. Louisans, they might not pick up the magazine if a local band's on the cover. Hmm. Um, Why do you think that, though? I honestly, I think people don't give enough credit to the local scene, mm -hmm. and I also think, I think that's true with any magazine. I wouldn't be it music or anything, you know? I w might not pick up a free pu publication if I didn't recognize what was on the cover. Mm. Um, at the same time, Eleven is a very design-heavy magazine, so we make our covers look really cool, and that's how we get people to pick them up, whether it's sure. a local band or national. But um, I actually have talked to a lot of local musicians about that, about having more local people on the cover, having more national people, where's the balance? Because honestly, I would love to do just 100% local. Mm -hmm. But even the local musicians here say, we like that a national band's on the cover because it means someone who has no faith in the St. Louis music scene could pick it up and then open it and find us side by side with a national band. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really important for a publication like ours to present them equally, sure. to say, let's just present what's good and not really decide based on whether or not it's national or local. Let's just put what's good next to what's good, and if some of it's national and some of it's local, great. Yeah, I mean, we don't need to put local musicians on, on the short bus. Or in a special you know? section. <laughs> yeah. It's, they're good enough to stand on their own next to national musicians, which is really exciting, and I think when I started, I had a sense of that, mm -hmm. but actually like working this job every day, I'm so confident in that now. It's really great, and so I think with Eleven, I just want everyone to be, everyone in St. Louis to be as confident as I am, that the local musicians can stand their ground with the national musicians. And more and more local musicians are getting out, which is great, yeah. so, and I even find, um, that a lot of local bands here maybe even have a better national following or regional following. You know, they'll go to cities, you know, either other parts of Missouri or in the region or even the, the coasts and have sometimes better draw than some of their local shows and people know their lyrics out there and stuff like that. And I don't know, I think that is a pleasant surprise to those bands. But I think if you told the average St. Louisan who's not in a band that, they'd be like, really? Like, what? Mm -hmm. But it's good music, and it's like we have a bias against it because it's local. And it should be a positive bias, but mm -hmm. <laughs> often it's a negative bias. Part of, part of the biggest challenge of my job, one of the biggest challenges that is so easily avoidable, um, but it's just an ongoing problem is like, I can't even find some bands that I want to find mm -hmm. that are local bands. I'm Google searching for them and I'm looking for them on Facebook and maybe at best they have like a Reverb Nation page that has one track on it and no contact information. And it's like, I'm trying to book you. I want to pay you to play a show or I want to connect you with, you know, someone that I think could really help you out and I can't even find you. Mm -hmm. And I do that professionally. <laughs> yeah. So like that is something that I think really needs to change in St. Louis and would really help the scene here because there are, like I, not being from St. Louis, I have a lot of friends that live all over and I'll send them local music and they'll love it. And they're like, when are they gonna play Chicago? Or how can I get their CD? And it's like, well, I guess you really can't. <laughs> it's just cause I sent them to you and you're gonna have to wait years before they get their tour up to Chicago planned out or whatever. Yeah. So I think it is slow, but it is happening definitely. And I think events where people are actually forced to be in the same room together and see each other face to face, um, a lot more happens organically out of people connecting that way um, than maybe reading a story and you know on paper. Um, 
and those stories do a lot but there's mm -hmm. there is definitely something to be said to like getting someone out in a new place and seeing a new band live and like special events seem to be more appealing to people anyway yeah yeah like you well, can go to a show any any night you know mm -hmm. but like something like kind of special and unique and like that has like a even just like a name or like a theme yeah like those things tend to be kind of unique and special yeah we had um for example in february we had a roller disco at skadium um in super south city like Carond south south mm -hmm. carondelet and it's february i mean it was cold um and i think about 350 people came in disco wear like dressed to the 70s theme which was awesome and msif uh, played in the middle of the rink and people could skate around them and it was super cool and honestly MSIF is a weird band so like for people the people who came some of them came for MSIF and were really into it and others were like whoa what is this but I love it mm -hmm. because it's in the middle of a skating rink and this woman just came out of a box so <laughs> um, it is really fun when we can do events like that and frankly like because Eleven started as a college magazine, a lot of our readers are students and a lot of the student mindset in St. Louis is like, I'm here for school, I live in this little box that is a campus yeah. and whether or not I'm from here, as soon as I graduate, I still wanna leave. <laughs> um, so to have an event like that where it sort of pulls people who are in that mindset down to South City from Clayton or from you know, we had kids from Edwardsville who came out for that. And they had a great time and they loved it. Like, that is a really cool thing for us to be able to do 